Something I've been really enjoying seeing lately is all of this really awesome graphic digital art that's been coming out, and everything down to the way the shapes are structured and all the colors, it's just, it's so good. So I decided to make this tutorial to explain how some of these artists have achieved this look, and I found a lot of the answer to be in the lasso tool. Now a lot of other art programs have something similar, but in this case I'm going to be using Photoshop as a base. Now with that being said, let's get into it. Welcome back everybody to another video. My name is Daniel and in this one we are going to be learning how to use the lasso tool together. Now something I'd just like to address before we begin, in my lasso tool you'll notice that I've changed my keyboard shortcut to A. Normally it's L but I've changed it to A just because I like having all my keyboard shortcuts close together and if I have to move my hand across the keyboard multiple times that's not going to cut it. So in order to do that, if you want to, you can go into edit, keyboard shortcuts, this menu will pop up and then where it says lasso tool, polygonal lasso tool and magnetic lasso tool, change all of those into A. Now in doing so we will have unbound a few other tools which is the path and the direct selection tool. We can go ahead and change that to L since it is no longer being used. Now once we have our lasso tool selected, go ahead and draw on the canvas. We will create a selection just like this. If you'll notice around the selection we have these tiny little moving lines. Now these are known as marching ants because they look like little tiny marching ants. If we go ahead and use our arrow keys however, we will be able to move the selection up and down or left and right. Or if you wanted to, you can just click the selection and drag it around like so. Once we have the selection, we can press Alt Backspace to fill it in with a foreground color. And then if we press Ctrl D to deselect, we will have a shape just like this. Now I'm just going to move a couple of steps backwards here to our original selection. If we press Ctrl, Shift and I, we will inverse the selection. So notice the marching ants actually go to the bounds of our canvas. Now if we fill it in, we will create essentially a stencil and everything that we've selected is being inversed. Okay, but what if we want to add selections to our original selection? Every time we draw with this lasso tool, it's going to create something new. Well, it's very simple. All you have to do is hold Shift in order to draw additional selections. Now they do overlap and once we have something like this, hold backspace and we have a new shape. If we wanted to remove parts of our selections, all we have to do is press Alt and then draw what we don't want. So I'm going to go ahead and try and make some kind of strange donut shape here and then maybe remove the top and we have a very funky looking horseshoe, but that's how you remove selections. So something you would have noticed so far is that every time I go to draw with the lasso tool, it is freehand and it's really difficult to get nice clean looking shapes like this. Well, if I go ahead and press and hold Alt and then click anywhere on the canvas, it's going to create various anchor points like this with nice straight lines between them. So this is the way to create clean graphic looking shapes using the lasso tool and then Alt Backspace to fill it in. Now with this method, we kind of run into an issue here because if I try and remove selections here using straight lines, if I press Alt, it's going to go back into that freehand mode. So how do we get around that? Now it's a little bit complicated, but what you have to do is you have to press Alt, tap where you want the selection, release Alt, and then press and hold Alt again. <laughs> and then once you've done all of that in succession, we will have the nice straight lines and that'll allow us to remove part of the selection. I know it's really complicated, don't worry, with enough muscle memory and practice you will get there, but that is how you get those nice, clean, straight lines. And just a side note too, I had no idea that was a thing for the longest time in Photoshop, so being able to remove selections like that is really handy when you create shapes. Me personally though, I don't really use it that much. Instead, what you're seeing here, if I did want to remove part of a shape, I would create the shape first, and then go ahead, create another selection, and simply just delete it from the canvas. That's just how my brain works and um, you can use whatever method is easiest for you, but I figured I'd show you everything anyway. So sometimes you just want even cleaner looking shapes and the lasso tool and the straight line method isn't going to cut it. That's where the marquee selection tool comes in. By pressing M on your keyboard, you will have the rectangular marquee tool like this, click and drag, and then if I wanted to add any other selections, it's just the exact same thing. Hold shift click and drag, and then if I wanted to remove selections, yep, you go ahead and press Alt. 
Now, something great about this too, is that we can switch back to our lasso tool and add even more selections on top of your selections as if it wasn't enough. And even the straight line method works as well. Once we've gotten this crazy piece of art, all we have to do is press Alt Backspace and we've just created something beautiful and abstract. Something of note with the marquee tool, holding shift when drawing it creates a uniform shape, whether it be for the rectangular marquee tool or the elliptical marquee tool. Just creating a couple ellipses here as well. So it's all well and good knowing how these things work, but showing you how to actually use it in a painting is really important. So I'm going to be providing this demonstration here where I paint this tree and I start off by creating a gradient and then using a combination of the marquee selection tool as well as the lasso tool to block in various big shapes. The first one being the big grass that you can see at the bottom and then I'm creating the bark of the tree and then eventually the entire shape of all of the leaves. Once I create the selections though, I switched over to a custom leaf brush here and then just painted all of these little bits and pieces in. And I'm also just varying up the brush size by using the bracket keys on my keyboard. Now for the clouds, all I did was created some shapes, switched over to an airbrush, turned on pressure sensitivity and blocked it in just like that. And we have a really nice combination of hard and soft shapes within the one selection. Going back over to the grass, I switched over to another custom brush with some texture and color variation, and then I'm just blocking that in. So the stuff that I'm sort of thinking about as I'm doing this is how can I best represent what I'm seeing? And through the different shapes and combinations of lasso tools and paintings and all that kind of stuff will allow me to go ahead and answer those questions. Something you'll be noticing too is I don't use the lasso tool for absolutely everything. Right now for the shadows, I'm just using a regular brush to block that in. But you'll notice that by creating those shapes at the start, all I do is I lock the transparent pixels by clicking on that little checkerboard icon and then painting within them. So it's about creating the best possible representation of the shapes and then breaking it as you see fit. So even now with the leaves, I'm just going ahead and blocking in and messing them up a little bit. I'm also erasing parts of it just to make sure that it doesn't look like a selection at the beginning. A cool tip with trees specifically is that the leaves don't have to be connected to that big mass. You can also make them floating a little bit just as you see at the bottom there and just to introduce a little bit more visual interest. So right now what I've done is created a clipping mask on top and I'm still using that same custom leaf brush except now I'm painting in all of the highlights. The way that I tend to approach trees like this is thinking of the entire mass of leaves as a giant ball. So in our reference image, you can see the light source is coming in from sort of the top right, maybe top left. It looks pretty midday to me, so likely the sun is directly on top. But sort of approaching shading this as you would a sphere is a really great way to kind of visualize all those different bits and pieces and actually just simplify them as well. If there's one thing I would like you to get out of this process, it's create the basic shapes and then add complexity on top and keep things as simple as you can for as long as possible because I think that makes the entire painting process a lot easier to manage. So now you notice even though I put all the leaves at the start, I'm still finessing them. I'm still adding bits and pieces. I'm changing the levels. I'm adding in more color variation because it's the main focal point of this image is all of those details in the leaves being hit by the sun. Even right now, I'm just going in and adding a bit of color variation within that You'll notice that because I've left the highlight layer on top, I can actually go back to the original mass of leaves and add just a little bits of purples, a little bits of blues in there for some ambient lighting to really make things pop. Now, this was just an example using the lasso tool. Let's move on to something else using the marquee tool instead. Now, in this example, you can see that we have a window frame on the bottom right hand side. And I'm going to be creating that just because I thought it was a great example to show all of the different complexities that may be present. All I'm doing first is created a rectangular shape using the rectangular marquee tool. And then by using an ellipse, all I'm doing is just lining up the two shapes together so that they create this archway that you see. Now, it's a little tricky trying to line these two up and ultimately I had to play around with it and start it over again. But what you have to do is create the circular shape and by using the free transform tool, which is activated by pressing control T, make sure that the pixels are sort of lined up. If you have snap turned on in Photoshop, this should be a little bit easier too. 
but ultimately once the shapes are aligned I merge the two layers together and then we have a base to work off which is this. The next step is to press Ctrl J to duplicate it and then changing the color to this gray that we have here and then free transforming it inside just so we have that window shape in the frame. Once that's done I'm going to go ahead and start creating all of the little window frame dividers just by using the marquee tool again and then You'll notice I'm creating these on separate layers and then using the actual align to canvas I can actually create the shapes directly in the middle. If you're not too sure what that means I did have another tutorial where I show you how to paint buildings in Photoshop which I will link right here and that goes into a little bit more depth with how you can uniformly align things in Photoshop. Now all of these shapes are done I'm going to merge them into a single layer and then start by creating this little circular shape just on top of the window frame here and then using the arrow keys to align it if necessary. I'm also going to go ahead and create these two 45 degree lines here by using Control T and then holding shift to snap it incrementally. I apologize if I'm going a little bit too fast here but I did just want to provide a demonstration for how I personally use the marquee tool to create shapes in Photoshop. And it's just through combinations of marquee selection tool and also the lasso tool that leads to that graphic style I was mentioning at the beginning of the video. So right now I'm just creating very fine details here and just adding in that little bit of drop shadow underneath the uh, horizontal bands just to give everything a bit more depth. So now I'm just going to slow things down for a second. What I'm trying to do at this stage is create this little bit of shadow in the window frame. Now the way that I've done that here is instead of using new selections, all I'm doing is creating and working from what I already have. So all I've done is created a duplicate of that main shape that we have here, that big sort of archway. And then I'm just trying to look at the negative space of where the shape is gonna be. So notice at the top that where that gray sits, that is going to be eventually turned into our shadow. Now the whole roundabout way of doing this is because we need to create the cleanest selections possible from what we already have. So all I'm going to do is control and click on the layer that has the gray shape on it. And you'll see that this actually selects everything. And then what I'm going to do is press control and alt and then click on the black shape that I've just created. What this does here, you can see it's actually created this little band that we can work across. And all Photoshop has done is that it goes, okay, so you wanna select all of the gray shape, but you want to remove all of the black shape. And what we have left is this little space here that we can call our drop shadow. And of course we can also duplicate this window a bunch of times to create really easy window frames for an entire building. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. I've also written down all of the keyboard shortcuts I've used in this video, so you can take a screenshot of that for future reference if you want to. Until next time, take care and stay safe.